Hello, my name is Eric Conley. I'm the Gary County 4 H Youth Development Agent. And this week is Earth Week. And so what I thought I would do is I have a, an activity that uh, this is something that you don't necessarily need a kit for, but it's something that you can actually put together at home. But we are here at the Gary County office. We're gonna have a few of these available uh, so that families can come and pick them up. And this is a, a family activity. So this one, we're gonna focus on water. And as you are well aware of, we have a huge amount of water, sometimes a little bit too much, but we have a huge amount of water in Kentucky, a lot of flowing water. Uh, the, the statistic has been thrown around that we have the second most miles of streams and rivers and creeks, uh, moving water essentially in uh, all the 50 states of the United States. The only one that has more is Alaska, which is our largest state. So that's really something to consider when you think about how small our state is compared to some of the others. Now this particular activity is gonna be dealing with uh, streams and rivers and creeks, and it's gonna be dealing with the biological life that actually lives in the stream, river, or creek. So I'm gonna take you all through the activity and kind of give you an idea about some of the things we're gonna be looking at and how the activity works, and then how you can do it uh, not only with the kit or some of the things that we provide, but also just at home. Uh, and and I would be, I'm gonna actually share some of the information uh, on our Facebook page and I'll, and I'll actually put it on the, um, the website as well. So just a, a, a couple of things. Number one, uh, the reason we do this is when we do a biological assessment of a stream, river, or creek, uh, or you can actually even do them of a pond, and we go in and we look at the life that lives in there, we're typically looking at what are called aquatic macroinvertebrates, okay? So, or benthic macroinvertebrates. So aquatic simply means, of course, water. Macro, M-A-C-R-O, macro simply means that we can see it with our naked eye. We don't need a microscope to see it. And then uh, invertebrate, of course, uh, for all of you all that uh, may still be in fourth grade, or you, you, heck, you probably know this even before fourth grade, uh, but you know that an invertebrate is something that does not have a backbone. So when we talk about that, we're not just talking about insects, but we're talking about a variety of things. And so, uh, you know, that could be insects, and we know that insects, you know, they have three main body parts, they have six legs, and there's other parts of them that make them specifically insects. We're talking about decapods, which could be things like uh, crayfish and scuds and some of those things. So things that have 10 legs. Uh, we even talk about things like arachnids too. We have some spiders that we find near the water as well. So, uh, so when we talk about invertebrates that live in the water, we're not specifically just talking about insects uh, and we're actually not even uh, sometimes talking about invert or we're not even talking about things that have a hard shell on them. We could be talking about aquatic worms. We could be talking about leeches. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we, we have to consider when we're actually doing uh, a biological stream assessment. So, so what we're gonna be doing today is, is uh, I'm gonna take you all over here in just a second and let you all see uh, how we have everything set up and then show you all some of the sheets uh, and information that we're gonna be using actually to, uh, to do the project. So uh, we'll get started in just a second. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that everything is, it looks like everything is set up. So we'll get over there and we will get started. All right, thank you all. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And if you're looking at the paper here that I have laid out, you this is going to be our stream, okay? So our stream, uh, you can see that it has all of these natural meanders. Of course, I've got papers and other things laid over here. And then you see I've got items that are actually spread out all along our stream, okay? So uh, with a stream, really what you're looking for is you want your stream to have three uh, really important parts. You want it to have a pool area, you want it to have a run, you want it to have a riffle, and the riffle is where you get a lot of uh, rocks and it looks like the water is turning over and that water turning over is really important as far as oxygenation of the water. And then you're gonna get another run after that and a pool after that. And you want that process to be continuously repeated over and over and again throughout any kind of moving water system. That way there's oxygen that's actually always uh, moving in the system and water is not getting stagnant or stale in, in it. So it's constantly being moved. So this activity has been sort of modified or well, not even really modified, but has been taken from Project WET, which is uh, Water Education for Teachers. And so I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what they do. Uh, as far as that activity is concerned, and we'll look at some of the information that we have. So, <clears throat> you're gonna need, the things that you're gonna need is you need 11 different items, 
okay? So I've got clothespins and these little green coins and some foam pieces and these little aquarium rocks, uh, blue poker chips, green poker chips, white poker chips, red poker chips, some tiles, buttons, and some puzzle pieces. And this could be anything. So don't, you don't have to be married to these particular items, but these are, you know, I'm just trying to give you an example of what, so any 11 items that you have four or five of in your house, paper clips, or, you know, you could tear off pieces of paper or anything that you might have in the house will work for this particular activity. So, uh, so you can either, as far as the paper is concerned, you can either use paper or you can, uh, you know, draw this out in your driveway, whatever it is that you want to do to kind of set the whole activity up. Uh, you know, this is a good, can be a great art project. You can see how terrible my trees are, but if you really want to get advanced and, and try and draw some trees and dry, uh, draw a, a stream or a river area, I've got a little field over here. I've got some trees that are actually down in the water right here. So, and then of course, you know, I did a terrible job, but I'm sure that you all will do better as far as um, uh, presenting your water. So you're gonna get, and I'm gonna post, these sheets. So these are your uh, macro invertebrate identification chart. So when we look at these, <clears throat> it's gonna have uh, your larval or your nymph stage over on the left-hand side. It's gonna have an adult stage here in the center. And then out here is actually gonna be a blank one, but I've already filled in these. And so there's both pages that are there, okay? so. Uh, uh, talking a little bit about these, so <clears throat> one of the things about a biological assessment is, is that what we're looking for is not only are we looking for the right kinds of things in the water, but we're actually looking for a diverse group of things. And if you know anything about diversity, uh, you know that we're just looking for a, a broad scope of different items that we find in the stream that are going to kind of give us an indication of the biological health of our stream. And so, um, so some of these, so like right here at the top, we have a mayfly, and here is one of our native mayflies. It was actually, this one was captured in the Dix River. Um, but mayflies are an indicator of, uh, or they are not tolerant of pollutants in the water. So when you find mayflies that you know that the water is generally pretty healthy, okay? We also have stoneflies, and I don't have a stonefly out here for you, but stoneflies are really neat creatures, and they also are, are not tolerant to pollution. Caddisflies, the same way. Dobson flies, and this has kind of changed over the years. Dobson flies used to be in, like, in this higher order, this higher category, but they're, they're not in the highest category, uh, and these are also called go devils or um, helgramites, and they're excellent fishing bait, um, but they turn into a really cool insect there. So then you have midges, and you have crane flies, and you have dragonflies, and of course dragonflies start out in the water. Uh, we have over 10,000 different insects in Kentucky, and a lot of them, not a lot of them, but several of them have some sort of beginning in or around water. So when you think about dragonflies, a lot of people don't really think, oh, I mean, you find them around water, but they start out uh, in the water as well. Then you have scuds, and you have pouch snails, which is we also call a left-handed snail. Then you have these tube effects worms, and then of course leeches. Uh, that are there. So when you find some of these other things that are near the bottom here, like scuds and pouch snails, tube effects worms, and leeches, these things are extremely tolerant of pollutants, and you can find them in all kinds of different water. Uh, dragonflies, they're kind of in the middle of the road, craneflies and midgeflies. Uh, so you, you're going to find those kind of in the middle, and then uh, everything else is either going to be in a higher quality water or a lower quality water uh, if you find only those things. But remember, if we found all of the different items that you see on this, that means that we have a really good, strong, diverse stream. It doesn't mean that the water is good or bad. It just means that, uh, that the, the water is extremely diverse, and that's really what we're looking for and how we can assess the water. If we find only some of the ones that are at the top, we kind of wonder what's going on and why we're not finding some of the things at the bottom as well okay so I'm going to so I want what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> we go through and we assess our stream and when we do that we want to make sure that we give each thing 
a spot. So mayflies are gonna be red poker chips, stoneflies will be puzzle pieces, and so on and so forth. And that's just gonna give us an idea of what it is that we find in our stream. So when we do our actual assessment chart later on, which is gonna look something like these couple of pieces of paper that you're also gonna get, these are gonna, this will be able to, you know, we'll be able to tell, oh, I found this in my stream, and this is a good indicator, uh, or my stream is really healthy based on what I'm finding in the stream. And I'm, we're doing this indoors, but this is absolutely something that you can go out and you can do uh, in a local creek or stream, uh, you know, make sure that you have an adult with you, make sure that there's multiple people, do not get into high water. But I mean, everybody has probably done this. You've gone and turned over rocks and found crawdads and done all those kinds of things. This is just, uh, you know, um, a more, I don't want to say advanced version of it, but it's a more, it's, it's just a specific version of it. So you're, you're actually trying to learn and figure out what exactly it is that you have in the water. And it's really cool when you look under those uh, rocks. So this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and I'm going to say, okay, I'm looking for, I'm going to look for mayflies first. I found red poker chips. Okay, so I've got one. I've got two, and the purple pieces of paper, and you're also gonna have purple pieces, or you're gonna have pieces of paper if you'd like, but these are supposed to represent our rocks where our um, riffle might be, and I'm gonna look, and I don't see any more, so I've only got two of those. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go over here, I've got my pen, and I'm gonna say mayflies, and I found two of those, okay? So I'm going to continue to go all the way through puzzle pieces. I don't have, maybe I don't have any puzzle pieces. Ah, oh, I don't have any puzzle pieces. So gosh, I'm going to put zero there. Caddisflies are buttons. Oh, so I do have some of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, do I have one under here? No, no buttons under there. All right, so I've got six buttons. Uh, let's see, Dobson flies, and Dobson flies are pieces of tile. So I've got one, two. So I've got two pieces of tile. Uh, let's see here. So two. Uh, midges are white poker chips, and I've got two of those. So I've got two poker chips. Crane flies are clover coins. That's the green shiny one. So I've got one, two, three of clover coins. Dragonflies are foam pieces. Now dragonflies are really cool because they have this extendable jaw, okay? And so here's a, a dragonfly. If you're looking for one right there, this is what a, uh, a dragonfly looks like before it turns into the flying insect that we see. And if you notice, there's like a, it looks almost like a V at the bottom there. I don't know if you all can see right where its head might be up in here. And that V actually is a jaw that will extend out and can grab a hold of its prey and that's how they eat. So they are uh, predatory. You don't have to worry about them though, but, but they are predatory, okay? So we look, we've got foam pieces. I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, nine foam pieces. Okay, so we had nine dragonflies in our stream. So scuds and scuds, let me grab this piece of paper again. Scuds, we're gonna be blue poker chips. So I've got one, two, three of those. So I've got three scuds. Pouch snails, aquarium rocks. So I've got one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven of those. Tube effects worms, and those are gonna be green poker chips. I've only got one green poker chip, so that's good. One, and then leeches, and that's gonna be clothespins, and I've got one, two, three. So I've got three clothespins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the math here, 
And I know, I'm sorry, math, but 3, 4, 11, 14, 23, 26, 28, 36, 38 total organisms that I found. And then what I'm going to do, and, and it actually gives you, if you look here on the chart, it actually gives you the formula that you're going to use, and you're just going to do some simple division and do some simple percentages of what it is that you found and how many you actually found. So now we're going to look at our other stream assessment sheet. And let's see, we found, we did not. Now this one, all you have to do is put checks and then you'll do some simple multiplication. So we didn't find any stoneflies. We found mayflies, caddisflies, and dobsonflies. So I put a check, a check, a check. I have three checks there. All right, so I have three times four is... Uh, I think it's 12, okay? So I look at dragonflies, all right? So I found dragonflies, scuds, and pouch snails, all right? So I'm gonna check all of those, and I put three there, and then I put three times three is nine. Midges, we found all of these things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check, because I know that we found them. I'm gonna do two, I'm gonna do four, and I did, found those, and two times one is uh, two. So if I add all of my scores up, so I've got 12 plus nine, that's 21, plus four, that's 25, plus two, that's 27. And if I go over here to the, the chart that I'm looking at, anything greater than or equal to 23 is gonna be potentially excellent water quality. So mine is a 27, so that means that my stream right now is in great, great shape. So uh, this activity can be set up in a wide, uh, you know, you can change it every time. You can make it where a stream is really good. You can make it where a stream is really bad. However it is that you want to set it up, you can set that up. So parents or teachers or whoever is kind of following this activity, it's an easy, easy activity to set up uh, so that you can see um, how beneficial it is that we know what lives in our streams and what it tells us about uh, the health of our streams, at least biologically. There are other tests that you can run, there are chemical tests that you can run, but it's really cool for us to be able to get into a stream, whether it be indoors like this one, or like I said, if you have the chance to get outside and it's getting beautiful outside, then take the opportunity to get outside and uh, to just flip over some rocks and see what it is. You don't have to do it as formalized as this, but if you just wanna, you know, Get in there and flip over rocks and see what it is that you're finding. You're gonna find all kinds of cool things. Obviously be careful, make sure that you have people with you, make sure that you have permission from wherever you're gonna be and uh, whoever you should as far as parents or adults. Um, and, uh, and just get out there and have a good time. So this has been, like I said, this is water quality, question mark. Ask the bugs, and this is a, the um, a macro invertebrate activity based on our streams, rivers, and creeks. I hope that you all have enjoyed it, and I won't turn this camera around so you have to see my face, but once again, my name is Eric Comley, and this is uh, from uh, the Garrett County 4-H office. Thank you very much.